welcome you to share this time with us, those that are on, uh, 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 we just thank you, uh, here at the Pansy Baptist Church. So, I want you to notice here in Ephesians, the last chapter of Ephesians, Ephesians 6, first verse 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that is, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live, live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to sin in the wrath of God. Uh, bring them up in the nurture and the admiration of the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and mother. This is, this, he said, this is the first commandment with promise. It's the only commandment with the promise. And that's uh, honor thy father and thy mother. I seen on TV there the other day he said you can tell about a, about a person how he treats his mother if he honors his mother and father then he'll treat everything else right. <laughs> if you don't treat them right then he uh, now there was a restaurant in. I believe it's in Florida. And uh, this uh, man had a man and a uh, and his wife and he had a little child. And, and I believe the mother died and the father took the little boy to the big city in Florida. And uh, brought, and before you know it, knew it, he had bought that restaurant and he was such a wonderful cook that people come around everywhere and so he bought that restaurant and he says there's so many people coming so he decided to build a bigger one make one so he built one outside of the town and he uh he put the and the, in the foyer Four years you go in there, he had a picture of uh, his mother and father. And he said, and the father, when he, he died, the mother died, and the father died, and he promised them that he would never sell alcohol. I know one guy, in, when he died, they all opened up on Sunday. They never did open except on, uh, they didn't open on Sunday, but when the parents died, they opened up. That's what he was. They, uh, I think that's great about Chick-fil-A. They don't open on Sunday either. They recognize it's Lord Day. A lot of the restaurants are not opening on Mondays and Tuesdays because they're giving their people time to get home, be with their families. Uh, because they don't do that. But anyway, he he had made a promise to his father and mother. When he when the father started to die, he said, there's one promise I want you to make to me, that you will never sell any beer, wine, or intoxicating beverages here at this restaurant. And he did. And he said, when he opened that restaurant up, there they were. All the beer mugglers and the, and the uh, intoxicating drinks, they come. They said, told him, said, you'll never, st uh, you'll never uh, mount to anything. This store, this restaurant will never mount to anything because uh, you won't sell any any alcohol beverage. I've heard that before. <laughs> Our streets are supposed to be uh, paved with gold. <laughs> in Harlem, and they ain't. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, uh, he didn't do it. He said, I, he told them, he said, I want you to look at this picture. He said, I made a promise and that I would never sell anything intoxicated in this restaurant. And uh, he, uh, afterwards, 
for years and years. It's one of the biggest restaurants in Florida. Uh, but uh, he uh, he told them, he said, I'll go back to Georgia on my farm and plow before I start selling stuff here. And he did. And so, <coughs> honor your father and mother. Uh, what a wonderful commitment on the part of a worthy son and a worthy daughter. In this passage here, what I am saying, you have uh, you have to understand the presentation God depends upon the family, upon the home. It is the foundation of the church. It is the foundation of the state. And it is the foundation of a nation. And it's the foundation of the kingdom of God. The family is is what it's all about. Uh, God ordained the family. Uh, in the early 1800s, I believe uh, the world was talking, uh, all the world was doing was talking about the, about Napoleon and his battles over there in Europe. He had already conquered Spain. He had uh, conquered uh, Austria, Germany, and, and he even threw his legions in against Russia. Uh, and uh, but during that time, that ever all everybody was looking for uh, what Napoleon was doing in, in his battle. In 1809, there was a. Uh, there was a, we had, we had a, a big Gladstone, he was a great British uh, prime minister during the 1800s. He was uh, prime minister of England at that time. We have Tins, Tins, Tinsel, uh, that's uh, Homer Tinsel, and we have uh, we also, in 1809, have Abraham Lincoln was born in a little log cabin in, in Kentucky at that time. So while everybody else is thinking about uh, battles, God was thinking about babies. But see, with the whole world was taking, talking about battles, God was talking about babies. And the Lord admonished and appealed to bring up the children in love, the love of Jesus. And in the wheel, uh, in the wheel and the, uh, and the admiration of God, there's a time when there must be a child cannot help itself. We can help a child, but there's a certain point that child has to do it itself. We can't do it no more. Uh, upon, uh, they are like a sheet of paper. You what you write down on them, they will remember. Uh, so, you remember First Samuel, Eli was a high priest, and uh, someone come to him and told him, he said, because you have restrained your, you have not restrained your son from evil. He. Eli was killed, his two sons were killed, and he was taken from his family. So, everything. So, uh, the FBI uh, said that particularly all criminals are below 21 years of age. And today, most of them is 18 years of age and younger. And some of them is younger than that. It is necessary to to look at that. We're not going to influence our children for God or for Christ. We're going to let them grow up. You hear that saying all over and over. I'm not going to take my child. I remember when I was young, I was brought to church, whether I wanted to go or not, but I was brought. And so, I know a lot of them that wasn't, and I know what happened to a lot of them too. 
I stood no problem. Uh, a lot of times people want to, you hear parents say, I want them to make a decision for themselves. Well, a lot of times that decision is not correct. You make the wrong decision. Uh, uh, one of the time I heard a man who heard about, about him going, but he would, he went to uh, to a man, the man wanted to show him his garden. And he went in and looked in his garden. His garden was all uh, big package of weeds. And he said, I didn't want to, in, want to influence that. I was afraid to let, uh, I wanted the vegetables to grow on my side, but I didn't want to influence them on the other. So that's the way we, a lot of us are. We don't want to influence half of what we do. We just want to influence some of it. So there was a young woman, a young man that married a, a godly man and played and had, had a children. But she said, there's one thing I always tell the parents. If I have one uh, older person to make a decision for the Lord, I say, they, your spouse will do everything they can to keep you from coming to church. And they will. They will do everything they can to keep you from coming to church. That, that's just natural. So this uh, lady did not uh, attend church. She thought that it was uh, uh, just a thing of the past that we, we don't need any kind of religious influence today. And so the man took the child to Sunday school every day, every Sunday while he could. And then when the child got up to be about teenage, mom decided to take her to, to all the other stuff. Everything that should I he should took him to she took him to she uh, she did not uh, want so when the father when the father was uh, you know how that goes they was, the kids was on their way home and they had a wreck and the girl was killed but she had a few moments to live and she looked up at her, at her mother and her mother come straight out and said, which way should I go? Should I follow my, my, your way or my father's way? And she said, you should follow your father's way. And that's what we were to do. Later before the Lord, the church, she made that confession. Uh, so we live in a, uh, in a fine season, but someday we'll stand at the judgment bar of Almighty God and we will do what, and when we do, what shall we say then? We stand before Him. Uh, may God bless each and every one of you. I'll quit there.